In the last part, we have got introduced to the interaction energy and we have seen an interaction between a carbon atom and dislocations where carbon atom was in alpha iron and gamma iron and occupies an octahedral void in these both structures. Now we'll be looking at elastic interactions of solute atoms which are substitutional in nature. Let's look at an interaction energy first. So we have got introduced to this term interaction energy and when this interaction energy is greater than zero that is when it is positive the dislocations will repelled by such solute atoms and when this interaction energy is negative the dislocations will be attracted by such solute atoms. So based on the value of this interaction energy we can find out whether the dislocations will be attracted or repelled by solute atoms. Now let's consider a general case where we consider a hole that is the position available for solute atoms to occupy in the solvent atom and let's consider its radius to be Ra and let's consider a radius of solute atoms to be Rs and we can write that Rs in terms of Ra as Rs is equal to Ra into 1 plus delta and when delta is greater than 0 we can say that Rs is greater than Ra that means our solute atom is oversized and when delta is less than 0 that is Rs is less than Ra the solute atom is undersized let us write that down the solute atom is undersized and when we try to put this solute atom into solvent atom which has this hole that is a position available for solute atom to occupy in the solvent atom there will be some misfit volume and that misfit volume we can find it out as Vs minus Va and which comes out to be 4 pi Ra square into delta where Ra is a radius of hole and delta is much much small or it has a very small values. Now when we try to put this solute atom into solvent atom and let's consider the matrix and solute atoms to be deformable so there will be a equilibrium position which will be achieved both by hole and this solute atom in this way whose radius is given by Ra into 1 plus epsilon. So when both are deformable there will be an equilibrium position which will be reached as Ra into 1 plus epsilon and let's say consider that this solute atom is non-deformable. So what this what will happen to this relation so this epsilon will be equal to delta here let us write that down so when solute atoms are not non-deformable epsilon is equal to delta and let's consider this situation and there will be a total change in volume of a matrix because of this expansion of hold or a contraction of solute atom when both are deformable. So the total change in volume of a matrix delta V can be figured it out as 3 into 1 minus mu upon 1 plus mu into delta VH where delta VH is equal to 4 pi Ra square into epsilon. Here I have put a direct result. You can refer to a standard any standard textbook and can find out the change in the total volume of a matrix. Now when we put the solute atom into this hole we consider there is a symmetric distortion and this distortion will lead to interaction energy with dislocations in the presence of stress field and we can consider that this interaction energy in the presence of stress field as Ei is equal to minus sigma m into delta V where sigma m represents the hydrostatic stress field because this distortion is symmetric and thus it will have only hydrostatic component and no deviatoric component. So this interaction energy will always interact with dislocations having hydrostatic stress field around them. Now we have got this value of interaction energy to be equal to minus sigma m into delta v and let's consider an example of an edge dislocation or which has hydrostatic component also. So let's consider a stress field of an edge dislocation and we have seen these relations many times and let's find out a mean stress that 
के सिग्मा एक्स एक्स प्लस सिग्मा वाई वाई प्लस सिग्मा सेट सेट अपॉन थ्री एंड वेन वी एड दिस थ्री टर्म्स वॉट वी गेट दैट मीन स्ट्रेस टू बी माइनस टू अपॉन थ्री इन टू वन प्लस म्यू जी बी अपॉन टू पाई इन टू वन माइनस म्यू वाई अपॉन एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस वाई स्क्वायर सो ना इफ यू लुक एट दिस रिलेशन फॉर ऑल वाई टू बी पॉजिटिव दिस सिग्मा एम टू बी नेगेटिव दैट इज कॉम्प्रेसिव एंड वेन वाई इज टू बी नेगेटिव the sigma m turns out to be positive that is tensile in nature so we have seen this for a, an edge dislocation above slip plane for all y to be positive you have sigma m that is mean stress to be of compressive nature while below the slip plane we have mean stress to be in a tensile in nature now let's consider oversize solid that means epsilon or delta is greater than 0 that means delta v to be positive so delta v has a positive sign so now this interaction energy will depend on the sign of sigma m that is mean stress now if you look at this relation the sigma m is negative in this re region so negative and negative becomes positive so here we have interaction energy to be greater than 0 so here solute atoms will not come in this region while if i consider this region where sigma m is positive that is tensile in nature and thus this interaction energy turns out to be negative so oversized solute atom will tend to get this kind of positions over here now let's consider an undersized solute so that means epsilon or delta is less than 0 and that means delta v is negative and thus this negative sign and this negative sign becomes positive so now when sigma m is negative that is compressive nature this interaction energy is less than 0 and when sigma m is positive this interaction energy is greater than 0 that means undersized solute will prefer this kind of locations over these positions so we have positions for undersized atom is above slip planes and position of oversized atoms below slip planes so you can always see the oversized atoms will occupy positions below slip plane and where undersized atoms always occupy positions above slip planes and thus the interactions of dislocations and this solute atoms will occur now we can see here a plot of delta sigma versus percentage of alloy element added in iron and you can see that if i add carbon or nitrogen in iron in a very small amount still it causes a very large strengthening while well, you can see other elements such as silicon magnesium molybdenum nickel these are all substitutional elements in iron and they doesn't cause too much of strengthening as compared to carbon and nitrogen so this is because the stress field around these substitutional solute atoms has only hydrostatic stress field that is the distortion here is symmetric and thus it has only hydrostatic stress field while when carbon and nitrogen distort this octahedra where they sit in alpha iron they cause a symmetric distortion and thus lead to formation of hydrostatic as well as dihedric stress field and thus they can interact with both edge and screw dislocations while these majorly interacts with an edge dislocations and thus cause less strengthening as compared to these interstitial atoms now let's move on and see other strengthening that is solid solution strengthening which are modulus and electrical interactions so for that let's consider if you have solute atoms to be of equal size of that of solvent atom but has different shear modulus now here i have mentioned two cases here g2 that is a shear modulus of this solvent atom and g3 and g1 are the 
shear modulus of solute atoms where g1 is smaller than g2 smaller than g3 so here in this case i have solute atom which has higher shear modulus and in such cases the dislocations will be repelled by these kind of solute atoms while in case of this kind of substitutional solid solution where we have solute atoms which has lower shear modulus as that of solvent the dislocations in the solvent will get attracted towards such solute atoms so this is called as a modulus interaction so in modulus interaction the atom of the solvent is replaced by a solute atom of the same size but with different elastic constants then there is little or no lattice distortion due to solute atoms but you have different elastic constant that is different shear modulus here so interaction occurs since the dislocation must do more work if it has to move near an elastically hard solute that means the dislocation in the solvent atom will get repelled by solute atoms which has higher shear modulus because they have to do more work when they have to move close to the solute atoms which has higher shear modulus as compared to solvent atoms they will get attracted towards solute atoms which are elastically soft and get repelled when the solute atom is elastically hard so this is in brief what is a modulus interaction which is after flisher who has given this kind of interactions in solute solutions which causes strengthening of the material now let's consider an electrical interaction so this happens mostly in ionic solids so we have let's consider this rate to be a cation and negative to be an ion and let's consider there is a dislocation here so there will be a local change in charges so in case of ionic solids uh, which is marked by interactions takes place between the solute and dislocation at dislocations an edge dislocation will introduce a locally an excessive positive or negative charge that is where you have positive or negative charge excess where the dislocations are present and this will occur along the whole dislocation line as the excess alternately positive and negative charged ions so we will have this kind of scenario along the dislocation line as a result the dislocation attracts or repel electrostatically solute atoms so if we have solute atoms and that will get attracted towards this dislocation because there is an excess positive or negative charge and here i would like to note that the electrical interactions are quite small in comparison to elastic interactions so elastic interactions play a major role during strengthening that is solid solution strengthening now let's look at another interaction that is chemical interaction that is after suzuki and this happens when we have stacking points in a material so we have seen this scenario in case of abscessing materials we have where we can see a stacking fault which is present over here and this stacking fault is a region of high energy we have seen it earlier so this stacking faults form when there is a dissociation of perfect dislocation into two partials and these regions are of high energy and these these regions are energetically favored for solute atoms to segregate so you have these solute atoms which can get segregated at this high energy positions that is a stacking fault region and thus this stacking fault will reduce its energy so segregation of mobile solute atoms will occur at this stacking faults and that decreases the stacking fault energy and thus this width of stacking fault increases and the whole energy of the dislocation will decrease and this decrease in the dislocation energy makes it difficult to combine and thus the stacking fault remains stable you can see that a different equilibrium concentration of solute will be achieved at stacking faults as compared to that of matrix and this heterogeneous distribution of solute atoms will exert a locking force so this will stabilize the stacking fault and thus it exerts locking force on this stacking faults and thus we can say that the stacking faults are pinned because of this presence of solute atoms and this pinning of stacking faults because of solute atoms is called as a suzuki effect 
So this is kind of a chemical interaction. So what is happening? We have a stacking fault which has a high energy uh, region. This is a favorable region for solute atoms to segregate. So when these solute atoms, when they segregate, they reduce down the stacking fault energy and thus stabilizes the stacking fault. And thus this segregation leads to a different equilibrium concentration of solutes in the stacking fault and thus they lock this stacking fault and this effect of locking of stacking fault is called as a Suzuki effect and this atmosphere of solute so this presence of solute atoms at stacking fault is called as a Suzuki atmosphere so this kind of interactions are chemical interactions because we have a different equilibrium concentration of solutes and with this I will stop here